fear, building confidence, classical conditioning, progressive desensitization. Um, we still are having slightly different emphasis, Nick and I, in terms of the classification. Um, I call it biting. All right? The dog barks, growls, snaps, lunges, bites. That's it. I don't add this little bit at the beginning, fear aggression, dominance aggression, okay? Um, or territorial aggression. Um, and I'm not going to argue about it because I agreed with everything Nick said about treating it. I just don't bother with um, labeling it. Why not? Because what I found is my treatment protocol is identical for all of them. When I see a biting dog that chases, growls, barks, snaps, lunges, or bites, I do exactly the same thing with every case that I decide to accept. That with, within my skill range, within my preparation range, and within the level of bites, one through six. So one and two, let's get in and do it. And I don't care what the, 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 the label is. Level three, we take a little more time now because the dog breaks the skin. Level four, lots of thought before I take it. Level five and six, never. I, I don't see the point. So, but I, I don't want to get into an argument over this. It's, to me, it's inconsequential. So it's fine. And if people want to classify, I don't mind. And I will do it on occasions if I think euthanasia is involved. I'm going to give the problem a label to help the owner out. The, the, the fear of the unknown is, is terrible for people, okay? If the people label it themselves, I say, yep, I agree with them. When I'm working with owners, I agree with almost everything that the owner says. And they can say some really dumb things. Oh, they really can. You know, from what they've read in the media, you know, what they've seen in the media, and they'll say something, and the sort of thing where you just want to slap them. But I say, oh, yeah, no, that's probably true. Absolutely. And then they'll talk about treatment. And, and, and you would all want to react and say, you would not do that. You know, they want to grab, they want to go ugly face. You bad dog, they want to alpha roll them. They want to jerk them, hang them, zap them, whatever. I, you know, it doesn't matter. I just agree with them. And I say, yeah, that used to be a very popular way of dealing with this problem. But we, we have much more quicker, efficient, easier ways now. So then Panzer's owner, I said, can you send Panzer to mum? And so he says, uh, Panzer, go to mum. And then the, the lady calls and says, Panny baby, can you come to mum? Yeah, good dog. Panny, can Panny sit for me? Oh, who's a good boy. And Panny, lie down. Good dog. You know? Then I say, OK, can you send Panzer to Kristen? And mum says, Panza, and she's a really good mum. Because when you're doing a go to a child, when you say go to Kristen, you have to stand still and say nothing. If you repeat, go on, go over there, go over there, Panzer's like, what are you saying? And you totally compromise the child's chance to even train the dog. So she said, looking, no, she's nodding to Kristen, so Kristen's got it. Panzer, go to Kristen. And we have the pause there, and then Panzer learns people's names. See, we know the go to concept. Go to Kristen or Jamie. Oh, well, he, and it's a great way to teach dog vocabulary. And it's very useful vocabulary. So then Christian calls the dog and she says, Panzer, come here. Good boy, sit. Good dog, good dog. Down, sit, down, sit, down. We's a good dog, good dog. So if we analyze what you just saw there, you saw this little six-year-old girl with the ice white hair and the ponytail and this great big 100-pound beer moth, you know, in puppy two, Panzer. What happened? Well, the little girl sort of squeaked at the dog, and it did a few things. True? Yeah. Or you could say, the little girl gave the dog instructions in a squeaky voice, and the dog acknowledged her requests. Or you could say, the little girl commanded the dog in a squeaky voice. It all depends on what we call it. And the dog was compliant, 100% compliant not only compliant, but happily, quickly, and willingly compliant. 
Firstly, we build up, come here, sit down. We keep repeating it. I'm burning it in the dog's brain. Come here, treat, come here, treat, come here, treat, come here, treat, come here, sit, treat, come here, sit, treat, come here, sit, treat. Now, let's watch this. Okay, this is, it's so cool. What I can't do is this, all right, without getting bitten. So I back away, all right? Come here, treat, I back away. Come here, treat, and remember, for goodness sake, when you give a dog a treat who's scared, have another one in your hand immediately. Do not do this. Scared dog, never do this with a treat. Uh, you're penetrating the dog's safe distance, his flight distance, but he can't take flight, and his bite distance, but he's really inhibited, unless he's on tranquilizers, and then that's inhibited as inhibition, which is, means it's activated him, so he's more likely to bite and hurt. Don't penetrate like this, and then you inch forward, take the treat with your head gone, bring it forward, good, and he takes it, no, you take it nicely, but look at what's happened. The instant he takes the treat, empty hand penetrated right into his distance. You're going to get bitten. That happened to me with Ashby, uh, one of the other biting dogs that I adopted. He took a treat, then he bit me. And I said to him, you can live with me, buddy, because that bite didn't hurt. And that sure beats you being killed tomorrow, which is what's going to happen. You know? And that's what it's about, bite inhibition. Yeah, he bit, he's scared. He's the only friend in the world has died. And he's locked up behind a chain link fence, and some idiot's sticking his fingers through it. Well, they got a treat, I'll take that. Now they haven't got a treat, I'll bite it. It's, it's so simple, okay? So here's what we do come treat, come treat, come treat, come sit treat, back up, come sit treat, back up, come sit treat. You've got it, right? 20 reps. I don't want to Karen over all you to death, or Gene Donaldson you to death, but come sit treat 20 times over. Then you do this. It is so cool. Come here, sit, stay, stay. And what does the dog say? Get back over here with that treat. You can do that. 